So, um, I should say that, um, you know, my area is um, uh, integrable systems and I was interested uh, in particular in multi-value dynamics. So, the question um, I'm asking were motivated not by arithmetic but, uh, by, but dynamical system and in particular um, integrable system and uh, in particular relation to um, uh, Frobenius structure, Pinlevé equation, but you won't see them. So <clears throat> let me go straight uh, uh, to, just a second, I'm sorry for the, for the file. Um, so um, why SL to Z? I mean, it's um, uh, initially it was related to braid group actually, and the smallest braid group is three uh, um, threads um, um, braid group. But um, SL to Z is uh, is uh, uh, naturally appear um, in this theory. And of course, it has many uh, other connection, which is uh, um, um, uh, which is uh, with arithmetic and elliptic curve and modular forms. Now, the beauty of uh, SL to Z is that modular group, which is a quotient of SL to Z by center, has a simple structure. So it's a free product of Z2 and Z3. And uh, as I said, we have a uh, very um, deep relation with uh, topology. But the most important for me will be this relation with hyperbolic geometry. And I will be talking about um, uh, this uh, in detail uh, later. So uh, the, roughly speaking, if you consider, so it's, uh, what is uh, drawing here is the trivalent tree, uh, which I would call fairy tree. Um, uh, uh, usually it is also called fairy tree, and it is due to ideal tessellation of hyperbolic plane by ideal triangle, or you can view this as Voronoi tessellation for orbit of, of SL to Z, of orbit of I, uh, for example. So this representation will be very, very important. And uh, let me just point it out one thing, uh, which is uh, which will be important for me. So, uh, fairy tree is uh, is built from one zero zero one. Uh, this is infinity. This is zero. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, the um, on the top you have fairy uh, median, which is um, a plus c divided by b plus d. Now. This is also, um, and this is all be, also will be important. This is parametrization of what we called SL2N monoid. Namely, one can consider positive part of SL2Z matrices with non-negative uh, integer uh, entries and determinant one. So, for example, if you if you take, uh, they are sitting at the edges of the fairy tree. If you, for example, bottom vertical. Um, uh, is it working? Uh, if you take here, if you drop this edge, and if you drop this, then you have one, one, zero, zero. So this is identity. Now on this edge, or this edge probably is most interesting because this matrix will appear soon, two, one, one, one. It's a kind of cat matrix sometimes called. And uh, actually on this fairy tree, not only all fractions appeared, but also all, all uh, on this positive part of fairy tree, uh, this is a parameterization of monoid. So SL2N, uh, which is a kind of positive part of SL2N. So now, uh, how it is related, just one uh, uh, maybe uh, thing to say. Uh, when we, so what is the study of dynamical system? It's essentially study of Z, discrete dynamical system. You have map and you iterate it, right? So what I would like to see is a kind of, um, uh, 
uh, general question when we have a group and we have action of the group and then um, in, rather than line uh, future you have um, you have multi-valued map if you want and I want to study all the whole picture so I want to see uh, usually one, cho one uh, we chosen the, the, the we choose the branch of dynamics and then consider dynamics and uh, uh, along the branch, but I'd like to consider the whole thing. So I need to, um, to the positive part of a cell to Z is a cell to N, and it is drawn here. So this is the thing. Now, uh, dynamics, you choose the path on the ferry tree or in a cell to N, and, uh, and then you can see, you're asking question which you're usually asking in, in, the, in dynamical system. So, uh, so basically this is, the main thing now, uh, the story starts from uh, um, 19th century beautiful work of Markov, and I have to mention this, which was uh, uh, developed um, further by Hurwitz, and, uh, and Minkowski also, of course, uh, took an important, play an important role. They all appear here. So let me remind you what is Markov spectrum of a real number. So this is a minimal C, so I'm, I'm, it's a kind of measure of irrationality, but as I said, as I, as I learned uh, in this conference, usually a measure of irrationality is power of Q. But here we consider uh, power Q is two, but we would like to uh, reduce the coefficient. And, uh, and this coefficient is Markov constant. It's actually, Markov has written a paper in terms of binary forms, and his constant is one over. I think this, but anyway, it can be defined in terms of continued fraction like this, and uh, and it depends only on equivalence class of of uh, uh, GL to Z uh, uh, equivalence class of of uh, numbers depend only on the tail of uh, uh, continued fraction, and the question is what are the possible values, right? And this is a very very difficult question. Uh, but fortunately, luckily, uh, the, uh, the, the, the top part of, of this, um, of this um, uh, uh, spectrum, so mu of alpha, uh, the, uh, can be described explicitly. It turned out to be discrete, and the, the most irrational number in this sense is golden ratio, then root two, and then you have all this, this is the top uh, mm, five most irrational numbers. They all quadratic irrational, but a very special one. Um, so, um, what is that? Now, yes, how it is related to uh, this uh, uh, number theory. So there is a remarkable Diophantine equation called Markov equation, and actually in selected uh, uh, volume of, uh, of Markov works, selected works of Markov, it appeared two formula, one central limit theorem and another one is this equation. So this is, uh, but this was uh, uh, his master thesis. Um, so <coughs> he discovered a remarkable relation between the Fontaine equation um, and this question. Namely, I should say that this is, probably after Hurwitz's re 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 reformulation of his results. So first of all, all solution of this equation can be written, uh, can be found from 1, 1, 1 integer solution by applying, you see with respect to Z, this is a quadratic equation. I'm sorry if you know this uh, too well, but anyway, it's quadratic in Z, so if you know X and Y uh, and one of the root, then you can find the root using Vieta involution or Markov involution. The sum of the roots is 3xy, so we can find the second root. So for example, 1, 1, 1, you can 1, 1, 2, and then you can do, for example, cyclic permutation, and then you have uh, uh, this sort of thing. Now, um, uh, there is a, a conjecture uh, which is uh, due to Frobenius. Sometimes it's called Markov conjecture, but actually it's uh, for every Markov number appears maximal as only in, in, in one uh, Markov triple. Why it's important? Because I said that the spectrum is discrete, but the fact that it's simple is, is, is exactly unicity conjecture. It's still open. Um, so Markov spectrum above one thought is discrete. 
So the values of this mu are discrete, so it makes sense. And they, it has very special form where m is, uh, m is one of the Markov numbers. And Markov numbers is any number which appear in the triple, in the triple. And um, uh, this most irrational number, if you know the triple x, y, z, you can write it down explicitly. Okay, so this is the top. After one thought, it's, uh, it's largely open. There are some gaps known. There is a, a Freiman part of the spectrum which is close to, uh, which is continuous. But, uh, but um, uh, I think in general, it's largely open how to describe the, the spectrum below one thought. So, um, but uh, yes, so unicity conjecture essentially claimed that this is, uh, that this, this discrete spectrum is simple, so you have only one, so. So now, um, uh, growth of Markov numbers, the four, uh, it, it's important to study, and this was studied by uh, Don Zagir, and uh, his, uh, uh, his result actually suggesting this asymptotic behavior, but it's still, as I understand, there are some uh, things to be proved, but anyway, this is not the question I'm going, I'd like to, 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 to discuss. So what I'm saying is that essentially that from geometric point of view, the mark of numbers grow on a tree, not on a line. So it's unnatural from geometric point of view to look at this thing. So we better uh, choose the path and ask uh, how the, the numbers are growing. And there are interesting numbers here. So for example, in this branch, a low branch, every second Fibonacci numbers appear. Here is a kind of bell, pale numbers, but there are uh, many more interesting numbers on the tree. And the natural thing from the geometric point of view is to choose path and then study the growth, okay? So this is what we did. Essentially, this is the question. Um, uh, it, was not, it was motivated not arithmetic, but, but as I said, dynamical system rather. Whether this, this dynamics is integrable or not, but... Um, so, uh, so here is, is Markov tree. Now let's replace it, it's called so-called Euclid tree. And, uh, and uh, the, the, the rule here is much, much easier. So here is equation is Markov equation. Here the triple are related by C equal to A plus B. Like in the, in the fairy tree, right? We, we simply add in the numbers and put in here. So three, five, eight. And uh, actually, why it's Euclid tree? Because it's, uh, it's nothing else but um, a Euclidean algorithm, actually. If you choose pair of every pair of co-prime numbers appear in the tree and going down is Euclidean algorithm, slow Euclidean algorithm, basically. That's why it's called Euclid tree. And uh, the relation between Markov and Euclid tree well, well known. But if you look at the, um, uh, the, the for example, in the, in the uh, Zagir, Don Zagir paper, the representation is different. There are triple sitting uh, in the vertices and there is no hyperbolic, this, this hyperbolic uh, geometry picture, uh, it doesn't appear. And therefore, it's not clear how to state even the question here. We have, uh, uh, we have, uh, we can, uh, mm, uh, it's, it's, it's quite clear. So let me, let me go straight to the question. So here is the question. So, um, uh, right, so how to label path? Path we can label either by dyadic, but uh, we here we label in by continued fraction expansion. So basically the path how to read, if you know continued fraction, so how to read the path. So C0 is the number of left turns on the binary tree. C1 is the number of right turns on the binary tree. C2 is the number of left, and so on. So this is one-to-one uh, -one between uh, uh, continued fraction, uh, between real numbers and path. So you have as many futures on, on, on this SL to Z dynamic as many real numbers, basically. That's a, absolute of, of, uh, of hyperbolic plane, actually. So uh, the Markov numbers grows very fastly, so we have chosen double logarithm, okay? So to make them moderate. And, um, and uh, 
so this is this is the function we want to study, and that I think it still deserves to be studied because this is probably the more the most important um, uh, uh, thing which which I, I would like to to talk about about properties of these functions of the function. Uh, this can be simplified. It can be written in terms of uh, spectral radius of SL to N or the most simple way is probably to, to use Euclid tree, and then we drop one of the logarithm. One of the logarithm. They are all the same, and this is essentially, uh, this is uh, uh, the fact the relation between Markov and Euclid um, was already used by Don Zagir, for example. It's not something completely new now. Here is uh, our result with Katie, uh, who was my uh, PhD student. He, she graduated this spring. So first of all, this lambda of x is gel to z invariant, but on absolute, on absolute. Um, so this is uh, uh, more or less simple. Now lambda of x is uh, it's defined. Uh, yeah, it's defined on the whole absolute. It's always defined, so it's zero almost everywhere. But as Michael McGee, we uh, there, there is a question in our paper: what is the Hausdorff dimension? We suspected that it's one, but actually, it, uh, Michael McGee from Durham <coughs> uh, explained us why why it is true. Actually, Hausdorff dimension of its support um, nevertheless is one, although it's almost everywhere zero. Uh, the values, in spite of almost everywhere zero, it takes all the values from zero to log, uh, uh, log of golden ratio. So in that sense, it's, it's much uh, better than Markov spectrum, initial question. Uh, the, the set of values is just interval from zero to log. Phi, phi is golden ratio, and um, and this is probably the most um, interesting part because how to study such a function which is uh, a cell to z invariant. So on real now on rational numbers, for example, it's zero, so it's nowhere continuous. It's it's uh, so um, what we proved is that. If you choose subset properly, and uh, it, there was a kind of very natural subset of the most irrational numbers corresponding to the top of the matrix of spectrum, then uh, uh, lambda is uh, uh, is uh, um, uh, monotonically increasing from second uh, from silver uh, ratio to. Uh, Golden ratio, basically. So, um, and the inferior parameterization is convex, and uh, uh, Harper, the, the, the key thing here coming uh, from hyperbolic geometry. That's what I like to explain. So, maybe this is uh, the most important idea, uh, uh, which was introduced by um, Kohn and Agarshkov and Kohn in the 50s. The relation between arithmetics and hyperbolic geometry, it it uh, it goes back to to it's related to uniformization theorem. So basically, uh, it can be reformulated like this: if you take any surface, two-dimensional surface, then uh, with metric, then it has complete constant curvature representative, conformal class. So um, so here is the surface we would like to choose. We would like to choose a uh, rhombus, torus uh, with 60 degrees, right? I mean, it's a kind of called, uh, uh, this elliptic curve, corresponding elliptic curves is called uh, equivalent harmonic, that's why. Equivalent harmonic means rhombus, 60 degrees. So we take uh, Euclidean, um, corresponding Euclidean metric, and then we make a puncture. When we make a puncture the, uh, in the vertices, right, um, then uh, the metric becomes incomplete, right? And uh, Gaussian curvature, sorry, uh, Euler characteristic is now minus one. So uh, by uniformization theorem, there is a, um, a constant curvature. There is a hyperbolic metric corresponding in the conformal class of this metric. And this metric is unique. 
right? So what does it mean? It means that the, this uh, object puncture torus is actually can be represented as a quotient of upper half plane by the subgroup, by the Fuchsian uh, group of SL2R. Okay, so, um, so this is a crucial observation I'm talking about, that if you consider now closed, simple closed geodesics on this hyperbolic punctured torus, then it's simply related to uh, Markov numbers. Markov numbers, namely, Koch length half is two thought, and then you have, uh, so this is, uh, this is observation of Garshkov and independent, independently by Kuhn. So I will, uh, yes, so um, now uh, corresponding mapping class group, SL2Z is acting by cyclic permutation and Markov involution. So action, natural action of SL2Z on the torus and on the um, Markov equation, on Markov numbers, they are exactly the same. So basically there is one-to-one -one correspondence. So let me say, I, I, I mean, anxious of time, but uh, it's really important to, to, to explain this. this. This is the key. So uh, key identity which goes back to free care. So if you take two matrices in a cell to R uh, and the product, C, right? Yeah, right. Uh, okay, why, why are we talking about pair of matrices? Because punctured torus, uh, torus, fundamental group of a torus is Z plus Z. Punctured torus is group, free group of two variables, uh, F2, if you make a puncture. So um, it's generated by two uh, matrices, A and B, and how to define this um, up to conjugation? We can take trace of A, trace of B, but it will not define this, right? So let's take, that was the idea, I think, uh, free K and Klein, let's consider product of them and consider trace also uh, of, of AB. And then um, they satisfy the following relation. There is a commutator here with a loop around the puncture, right? So now uh, if we want uh, puncture to be real puncture, so, so then um, uh, we have puncture condition. Uh, this uh, commutator should be parabolic element of a cell to Z, which means that uh, it has to have uh, uh, negative trace, so it's minus one, minus one. So, so trace of minus, and then you see this constellation. This is the magic behind actually this relation. If you, can, if you use a parabolic thing, then you have constellation and you have and you have this almost Markov relation, except that um, without three. So there are two appearances. In arithmetics, you have three coefficient. In, the, in, in, in hyperbolic geometry, you have one. But the difference is multiplication by three. So there is nothing. That, and that's a, this was studied by Hurwitz, what we can put here with coefficient, one and three only, and so on. So and, uh, on, on, re, on integers, they describe most rational numbers. On uh, real, they describe the Müller space of punctured torus. So they both significant. And uh, on C, it's also a very interesting story, but I won't, I won't talk about this. So this is uh, on, uh, and this explain actually everything because um, you have action of uh, mapping class group, of course, as, uh, which is a cell to Z. Uh, the same for usual Torah and for punctured Torah. And uh, the orbit, Markov orbit, corresponding to 333 here, correspond to this, uh, our choice. And what, what it means that, um, yes, yeah, so maybe I should say the beautiful idea of Kuhn, which can be considered as quantization. So we have this, um, uh, we have this uh, Euclid, Euclid tree, A plus B equal to C. Let's replace it by non-commutative version, A, B equal to C. But let's choose initial matrices, special one. And then the claim is that uh, if you consider here, uh, this is a product of these two. So A, B, and C is a product, and you continue. Okay, so it's called con tree. Now, uh, the... Uh, if you take now one sort of the trace, you see we have one here, one sort of two here, 15 divided by three, five here, we will come back to this. So it's a kind of beautiful game which is 
very much uh, trendy now, you have to quantize, right? And uh, so first you can kind of tropicalize, so you simplify Markov equation to Euclid one, then you quantize, and of course you should come back. Yes, you should you come back using one sort of the trace. I mean, but this idea is, was already in, in, in corn paper. Now, the key thing here is the choice of matrices A and B. Right? So how it was chosen? Well, it's also significant, and Kohn actually explained that it's, it goes to the heart of the uh, group theory of SL to Z, namely, if you take commutator of SL to Z, commutator, which is generated by, then it's free group generated by A and B, and, uh, and this particular A and B um, uh, uh, give uh, uh, exactly uniformization uniformization of, 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 of this. So this is, um, so what uh, maybe a few things I, I would say. Um, so this is, um, uh, let me just show you maybe the, the, the um, there, is, uh, there is a function which was introduced by Fork which is related to Markov numbers, and there was a coefficient which was annoyingly uh, different from what we have, one over Q. And this is actually, uh, so Fock function has nothing to do because of this coefficient with us, and then we realized that it does, actually, but it works only on Markov, uh, on special path. And this special path corresponds to exactly to this uh, uh, most irrational numbers. So if you consider special path, then um, uh, then uh, mm, this this works. So these are the most irrational numbers, and you see Minkowski question mark function appeared, and uh, you need Minkowski question mark function in order to parameterize path. Uh, I, I have to skip, the key observation is our function, our function lambda is actually only on this most irrational path, it's half of, of Fock function. And Fock function has nice properties, continuous, convex, and so on, right? But if you consider general one, no relation, okay? Well, not quite, because we had some kind of general, so, so explanation is uh, you using quant tree, the proof is using all this what I, what I said, essentially. I mean, it follows from the right picture, so, so from hyperbolic, and we had generalization of this uh, Markov equation when we have here a special uh, additional term, and this corresponds to, to the, so, um, so let me just show you the picture, which is uh, 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 the second natural. Um, so this is uh, Conway. So probably it was Conway who first explained uh, this uh, uh, way to represent, you know, to use this fairy tree in this way, and he called it topograph. So if you have uh, a binary quadratic form, then you have then you can consider the values of, uh, uh, you have three coefficient. So if you know the values on basis, it's not enough. You have to know also the, as what can we call super basis. And then you have A plus A plus B. And then you have uh, analog of uh, uh, Markov uh, involution here. So basically if you know C, then you can find C prime using this. And this is, of course, for every, every quadratic form satisfy this. And then he, uh, there is a climbing lemma saying that if A and B are positive, then you have constant growth, and this is the thing. I mean, I just, uh, uh, so this, for example, is, uh, is the picture. So th this is alternative way to look at the values of quadratic form, geometric way. So this is, what are the values of quadratic form? Of course, we know the, 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 the theory of Gauss, about uh, 4k plus one and so on. But he said that basically you don't need it to know, you, you just grow the tree and you will see all the values, primitive values at least, uh, on primitive vectors of quadratic form like this without uh, alternative way, right? And, uh, and um, uh, for um, indefinite binary quadratic form, there is the so-called river and river separating positive and negative values on the topograph. Now, this is nothing else but geometric uh, um, uh, interpretation of continuous fraction expansion. 
that that's one to one and uh, um, uh, but but it's probably was new before it was not unknown before uh, it was not known before and we can consider uh, this function how they grow again along the path and uh, and uh, so here is the theorem the theorem is that grows is uh, twice lambda, which I introduced for, for, for Markov numbers, but except, there are exceptional. Exceptional are exactly the path corresponding to river. So there is a river, so you start from here, you go to the river, and you have two special paths when the uh, growth is zero instead of uh, what is predicted by lambda k. So it's, it's a kind of nice thing to, to look at. So let me... Um, just a few words. I'm very sorry that it's, it's taken longer. But uh, uh, so I think study of this lambda of x is a very important function that no doubt, but it's not clear how to study such a function, which is nowhere continuous. And uh, the only thing I can think of is generalization of Markov Hurwitz set. And there are some candidates in the recent Alec uh, paper with one son. And another, what I'm thinking personally, uh, at the moment interested <coughs> in three dimensional generalization related to cubic forms, but uh, uh, it's still, on the, and um, just, just some references which I, I should refer, that it's joint work with Katie and uh, Alfonso, actually, uh, part of this. That's it. Thank you very much.